From the John DeVita Broadcast Center, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisick on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. So sit back and enjoy Paranormal Radio. And now here is the super, super king <laughs> of Paranormal super. Radio, Mr. Bob Trisick. <laughs> now I'm the super, super king. Okay, thank you, John. Always nice coming to do these shows here. Um, today we have uh, an interesting show. One newbie, a new person that I'd be very happy to get on here. I'm actually happy to be, I've known uh, Shell Ward for some time, but we've never really talked. Never really had a chance. So tonight we get a chance to actually talk, so I'm kind of happy about that. Um, and then we did have a couple of cancellations. We got Mr. Um, Jason Streets back on, and then we had Kylie O'Connell, who just sort of popped on unexpectedly, which is great. Anytime, you know, so I say with the show, that's why I like doing it. You never know who is going to actually stop in or when they're going to do so. Um, we had two cancellations. I had Lee, Lee Lynn Pearson, of course, our co-host for the show. Lee Lynn called off today. He had some something going on at work. And then another gentleman, Jake Patrizio, he called off also, too. But I told him, don't worry, do what you have to take care of first. We can always do the shows later on, and uh, no problem with that. Okay, I just wanted to mention a couple of, of course, everybody, whatever you've got going on or whatever, any you know, your events and anything that you're doing, you, you know, give up, you know, throw a plug in for yourself here too for the folks that listen so they know what's going on. Um, April 17th, which will be next Monday, I'll be over at the, at the Forest View Library. I'll be talking, not a paranormal pro. I do touch a teeny bit of paranormal with that one, but it's basically not a paranormal program. It's all about Sears. All about Sears Roebuck and Company and the Sears Catalog and everything to do with Sears and some interesting stuff that you may or may not know about Sears. So I'll be doing that next uh, Monday night, April 17th, over at the Stickney Forest View Public Library. I'll be there with that. June 1st, Chinatown Tour. We got that one set with the Central Stickney Park District. Uh, give them a ring about that if you want to do that, 708-496-8292. And that will be the Chinatown Tour, which is a supernatural Chinatown Tour. We take a run through Chinatown. We visit a Buddhist temple. You have a nice dinner. Uh, it's all included with the price of the tour. It's 40 I think they're asking $48. Who's asking over there for that one? Uh, so you can sign up for that if you choose to do so. Um, and then the next week, is it, or the week after that, I'll be doing the Sears program again over at the place in Palos Heights there, or Palos Park, called The Center. I'll be there with them. Uh, and then some other things, but down the line we'll talk about that. And then i got some other things in the work here, too. Um, some things I wanted to mention about April, the month of April, because we've got some interesting stuff. And every April show, matter of fact, one time I did the whole show by myself, I did it, just all about Titanic. Because we do have a few April events, and a couple of them actually happen on Good Friday. Uh, supposedly Good Friday, and it happens to be a Friday the 13th, is like a very unlucky day, and biblically, for whatever reason, everything bad that has happened in the Bible supposedly happened on a Friday, and that's why they're called bad luck Friday the 13th. Uh, Frigatrisca decophobia, of course, too, is the fear of, fear of the number 13. Um, Good Friday events that actually took place uh, in New Orleans in 1788. A terrible fire started that burned down almost 95% of the city. Uh, it was started on Good Friday. A gentleman lit a candle uh, for a, at, a, at an altar. The altar wound up catching a lace curtain on fire, and the, from that it lit the house. He ran down the street to go to the cathedral to warn the priest to ring the bell. The priest would not ring the bell because it was Good Friday, and the bells were kept silent. So it wound up taking down about 95% of the city of New Orleans in 1788, including the cathedral. Uh, itself. Uh, but then they rebuilt, and then again in 1794, they had another devastating fire, which took down a lot of the city. So after that, they says, that's it, we need some codes here. So they changed things, and no more wooden roofs, and no more wooden outside buildings, everything with the brick between the posts, and kind of the architecture, the way you kind of see the city now when you go to New Orleans, that's sort of the way it looks now. Uh, up until then, it had a very different look to it, but they changed things a lot with that because of fires. You can't have your city burning down every couple of years like that. Um, April 1865, which happened to be a Good Friday, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. Happened on a Good Friday at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Uh, Civil War had just ended. The president decided to take a rare moment to relax 
and go with his wife and another couple to the theater and see a play and just relax for a little bit. And ba boom, he wound up getting assassinated. That was the last public event he ever attended. Uh, that was the end of that. A lot of things we could talk to about it. Maybe, well, maybe you'll mention a few of those things. A lot of things about Abraham Lincoln, the Lincoln assassination. And another event that did not take place on a Good Friday, but it took place on an April 15th. And it was a Sunday night. And that was the sinking of the Titanic. Titanic struck an iceberg out in the middle of the North Atlantic, April 15th, 1912. And um, 1130 at night, they hit the berg. And within a couple of hours, the ship sank uh, with a great loss of life. Over 1,500 people lost their lives on that disaster. And um, that's another thing I could talk forever on the Titanic because it's a, a thing that I'm a big fan of. So a few events that we've got kind of going on there on Fridays. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce the guests and give them some time to talk. Mr. Jason Streets, welcome back. Hello, thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be back on the show. Thank you, Bob. Glad to have you back. Yeah, glad you could make it. Yeah, and go ahead, just introduce yourself, Jason. Tell us what you do. Yeah, sure. I'm Jason Streets. I'm out there as a tarot by tie. I do tarot card readings throughout the Chicagoland area, private parties, public events, personal appointments, as well as online, uh, using services like Zoom worldwide. So, yeah. There you go. Boy, if that didn't sound like a good commercial, I don't know what does. <laughs> And then Michelle Ward, who's a new one coming on Paranormal Radio. Glad to have you with us, Shell. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad Happy to have to you here. here. Yeah, like I said, I'm glad for the opportunity to get in, you know, talk with you. Like I've known you for a few years, but we never actually had opportunity to sit and talk right. or anything. We've or always been at events where we're both yeah. so yeah. busy. So, we never had the chance to yeah, sit so, down so and chat. Yeah, so it's kind of nice. So I'm glad you could make it, yeah. And then, of course, now what do you You got anything coming up for yourself, uh, Shell? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. But I'm sure there are a few things oh, in the I'm works. Oh, I'm sure. Once, you know, the warm weather starts yeah. breaking all the events will start popping over and then uh the young lady down on the end there supermodel kylie o'connell uh you look on facebook all you see are all these pictures you know all the you know all the That's glamour Bob shots the yeah all, all the glamour <laughs> shots yeah yeah Bob, we're um, gonna get your glamour shots in i well mine are just i don't know if the world's ready for me yet I don't it's know. ready. It's yeah, ready. I, <laughs> I, well, I was going to say one one event that you forgot to mention was uh, in April. It's my birthday, Bob, and I'm oh really, well, happy birthday! When what day is your birthday? April thirtieth. April third. Oh, so you're at the end of the month, mm -hmm. the very last day of the month, I as a matter of fact. April thirtieth. My goodness, twenty. Let me see. I'm sixty six this year, so you are twenty five this year. Twenty six. Tw you'll be twenty. Mm -hmm. That's right. Twenty six. Yeah. Because it's you, you the, the time we all got together that time with Pete, when you wanted me to introduce mm -hmm. you to Pete, it was funny because 25, 45, 65. <laughs> yeah, the we fives. all had like a 25-year difference between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So interesting. So April 30th, your birthday. April 30th. And you, I know, are working on all sorts of things. I'm always the working on certain things. Yeah, Kildare, all the house, and I think too much sometimes. I, I agree. I'm, I'm a little bit all over the place. I wear many hats, so yeah, I yeah. like it. You know, I like keeping busy. It's It's... What you got to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, I like this. The, it, keeping busy, I think, is a key to life. But I, I like I like the luxury of doing the way I'm doing it now. It's like if I choose to do something, I do it. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to kind of be able to pick and choose now things that I do in that. So I, I'm kind of happy with that. Retirement is good. <laughs> Can't wait it's a good to get place there. to be. So now, what are you? Are you going to do a? Are you going to do a Kylie Fest this fall? I am thinking Kylie about doing Fest. a Kylie Fest. <laughs> and for those of you listening at home, it is a paranormal convention. Um, I had it back before in 2019, before all the pandemic stuff. But I had Spinguli there. Bob was there reading palms. You know, the the best thing that was there. Um, we had investigators. We had palm readers, psychics. You name it. It was all there. So I am planning on doing something again this September or early October. I'm just kind of figuring some things out, reaching out to some celebrities, stuff like that. So yeah, I know you're kind of you're kind of hee haw talking about it this way, that way, yeah. whatever you know. So yeah, because yeah. I know you're just you know involved with a lot of different things like that. And of course, when October comes, forget it. We're all yeah, busy with <laughs> my, my phone's just off in October. See yeah, yeah, it's yeah, see yeah, you yes. in November. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly right. it. I'll, I'll see you after the first week in November. Yep, correct. And last week of September, all the way through the first week in November, forget it. Yeah, I basically mm -hmm. yeah. go missing all of October. Yeah, maybe, maybe a Monday or a Tuesday night if I'm lucky, but even those now I'm getting filled in with stuff, so eh, forget it. You know, it's just it's a, busy, a busy man. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's <laughs> just a busy time of year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I work for your competitor. I work for, I'm, I'm over there, I work for Midnight Terror. No, yeah. no, they're not. They're they're <laughs> our sister haunted house. We love them over there. I know. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I we, like have our, they, we have. We yeah. have 
um, our posters over there, and they have our posters and stuff too. So yeah, you know, we love kind of works together with stuff like that, yeah. which is nice. Both yeah, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they put their mid, mid, yeah, kill the air stuff as up in midnight air, midnight air stuff something kill the air. So you know, yeah. we love them over yeah. there, mm-hmm. and they're close. So if you go to one haunted house, you can go to the other. Yeah. And, and on a house hopping. And then you guys usually, if you get a rainy night, you'll stop by and visit Midnight Terror. We do. Some of our, I remember yeah. last year I actually guest acted in the haunted house, and that was pretty funny. I got to scare some of our own actors that went through. I was in one of the rooms and just popping out everywhere. So that I was had a, lot a of few fun. of your people on the last show we did. Uh, Jake, of course, yeah, Jake. works with mm-hmm. you guys. Jake was on here, and then Dean and um, oh, yeah, Dean. Sal. Yep. Sal, yeah, They're they were on. They were on too. Yeah, Dean. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two interesting guys. Yeah, yes. they were on. Yeah. So yeah. So everybody gets around. Okay, let's see. Who do we want to talk with first? Jason, what have you got to say for yourself? Oh, no. Put me on the spot. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and, of course, anytime anybody wants to add in, just chime right in. Well, we run a loose the, ship here. What's so. the topic of discussion? I, I know I well, kind of just... I, you know, I, re- I don't really do that. Just make it uh, up as we People always say, go. what is your topic or whatever? And we really don't. Like I said, if you want to talk anything about, like Spooky I said, the April events, Abraham Lincoln, the Titanic sinking. I know Shell has something about the um, Lincoln uh, thing there. She's got something to say about Abraham Lincoln. But um, I kind of do that. Other than that, I really don't do topics like certain things. Whatever people have to talk about. I, You know, when I first started doing the show, I would sort of research like what the people did and that kind of thing. I knew that. in, But I never liked to do questions, like write questions down. Because to me, it just seemed too scripted and too rehearsed. And I didn't like that. It's like, well, Jason, how long have you been reading tarot cards? Well, I've been reading tarot cards for the last 20 years. <laughs> so he's well, an what is the most interesting right. person you've ever encountered reading tarot cards? Well, there was this person one time that I said was going to die. You know what I mean? It just don't, you know, that kind of thing. It's just too scripted and too rehearsed. So I just kind of let the conversation kind of flow where it is. Anybody brings up anything they have to bring up. And I find out that it's a pretty interesting show. It's a, more, a little more interesting for me, too, as an interviewer, because I'm not so scripted and just rehearsed. So, so. Go Jason ahead. actually gave me my first tarot reading ever. Oh, rock on. He gave you your first yeah. tarot yep. reading. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That was awesome. Uh huh. Okay. I would recommend them. Ten out of ten, everyone. Thank you. There you go. I okay. also <laughs> would recommend. Thank yeah. you both. That's See? awesome. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got something that also occurs in April. Uh, I was on your show last time, and at that mm-hmm. time I was interviewed sort of, well, the, the way I was speaking anyway was as a minister of Satan with the Satanic exactly, Temple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to get too far into that, but yeah, okay. something else that happens in April from my perspective, from a Satanist's perspective, particularly of the TST, is our holiday, Hexanoct, which falls in late April. I believe it's on the very last day of April. In fact. Ooh, it's on, on my birthday. birthday. Yeah, yeah. It, was just, it was made for me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but it, it's interesting because it's basically a celebration of, um, well, it's an observation of all of those who have been, like, Think of witch hunts, those who have been persecuted due to moral panics or... The beating they took in Salem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's basically Hexnacht coming up in yeah. late April. I think it's on the 30th. I could be wrong. I should have looked at Now, was that when the witchcraft trials... No, I don't think the witchcraft trials took place in April, the Salem trials. I don't know I don't know when they took place. I don't know exactly when they took place, but that's yeah. when we're yeah. observing mm-hmm. it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is so it like that a festival is... or anything? Well, uh, this particular year we... Yes, there's there's rituals and, and uh, it's it's considered a holiday mm-hmm. in our religion. So um, everyone's sort of well, Satanists were like trying to herd cats, mm-hmm. um, but everyone's welcome to sort of observe it as they like. But there are uh, in group rituals and festivals. And and in this particular year, um, the uh, there will be a convergence of people of my uh, religion that will be occurring in Boston this year for SatanCon. So that we're actually, oh, there's a Satan con. Yeah, okay. what is that? Uh, it is sort of an. It's the second year. It's going to be an, essentially an ongoing annual um, mm-hmm. gathering of Satanists uh, to sort of celebrate us as a religion. Okay. Uh, and so this will be both our 10 year anniversary as a religion, as well as it'll be the observation. Only of, 10 of years? Hexanon. I thought Satan was well. Other, our particular well, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the other branch, yeah. the yeah. Temple of Satan. That's much much longer. The, the Church yeah. of Satan was started in the 60s by Levee. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. He is a more contemporary phenomenon. Started in 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. so that's happening in April. Yeah, good. There okay. Go. Your theme. So there's one for April. So we'll be looking for posts on that. So if anybody wants to get a ticket to Boston to go, <laughs> well, to I know the how Satan I'm con. celebrating my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you can go to you go to Boston too and celebrate your birthday in Boston. I've been wanting to go back actually. I've been when I was 13. It was awesome. I love Salem. It's a great place. Awesome. I never was in that neck of the woods up in New England. Other parts of the country, like everything the other way, but never nothing I did that uh, end of Richard the country. Crow weekend uh, with, out in uh, Salem many, nice. many, many, many years ago, mm-hmm. so that was pretty fun. So I would love to get back there just to see the changes, too. They've had so many changes. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Shell, what do you got going on? <laughs> Uh, pretty much. I've uh, been writing poems. 
Okay. Trying to do a little of social media thing. Um, doing a trip out to California to see some folks, but oh. I will try to get on the Queen Mary. Oh, I'm sure. Out there. Yeah. Do a little ghost investigation yeah. if I can. So I'm looking forward to Very that. Very haunted ship. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Can't yeah. wait for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, you wrote a poem. I wrote a poem. You wrote a poem about, well, go ahead. You tell us what it's this about. This is regarding Abraham Lincoln's ghost train. Yep. Which has been seen. Mm hmm. Uh, I believe it was in Albany, New York. So mm, no, no, here in Chicago too. And ooh, well, it, I didn't it shows see up that in Chicago, one. but it's, it's in Chicago. It's sort of a dormant ghost. Uh, the last known time uh, that it stopped by Chicago was about 1910. Mm -hmm. the, the last time anybody ever seen it. Now people do show up there on the anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Uh, they show up at the train tracks, and they say they have funny things happen with the electronics. People get the funny feeling, watches stop, stuff doesn't work, that kind of thing like that. Right. But no one's actually seen the train until 1910. So it might be like a dormant ghost or a mm -hmm. dormant entity, you know, just something that hasn't been seen in a while. Okay, right. let's hear the poem. All right, so this poem is called This Spectral Train. In the dead of night, when the world is still, and the moon hangs low over the distant hill, a ghostly train comes chugging by with a spectral conductor's eerie cry. It is said that Abraham Lincoln's ghostly form is sometimes seen upon the train forlorn. As it glides along the tracks of time, a haunting echo of a bygone rhyme, the whistle blows a mournful sound as the phantom train goes rumbling round. And those who hear it shiver with fright for they know that Lincoln rides tonight. He gazes out with hollow eyes and whispers words that sound like sighs. Of peace and hope and unity, of freedom, faith, and equality. But though his words are wise and true, the living fear what ghosts can do. And so they hide away in dread when Lincoln's ghost train comes instead. For the train carries a heavy weight a burden no, no mortal can abate. And the ghost of Lincoln can only ride on this spectral train that knows no guy. Oh, very nice. I'm Thank shaking. You. Very nice Don't show. be yeah. scared. You're going to have nightmares Lincoln's, um Lincoln's ghost is probably one of the more active ghosts, I think, of well, of any of the ex-presidents. He's a very active spirit. Um, and one of the better-known apparitions to show up in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many uh, stories. First, uh, the first time I know on researching it of anyone seeing Lincoln's ghost was in the 1920s. Just exactly what year, I don't know. But it was then First Lady Grace Coolidge, wife of President Calvin Coolidge. She happened to go into the round, uh, yellow, the yellow room, the yellow oval room. Uh, she went in there, and she says, sure enough, straight ahead, there was Abraham Lincoln with his hands behind his back looking through the windows out over the Potomac. And when she came in, he turned around, sort of acknowledged her being there, and then sort of smiled at her, and then just dematerialized right in front of her. And then, of course, it's been seen many, t seen and felt right. many, many times through the years, as well as the ghost of Willie Lincoln, his son, too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who I believe yeah. uh, was buried with Lincoln. He was on the train. He, he, well, well, actually, Willie, yeah. The they, now, the, the Lincolns had four sons. They lost one son in Springfield before he was elected president, Eddie. Eddie Baker Lincoln died in Springfield. I think he was like four years old. He passed away in Lincoln, and he was buried in Oak Ridge Cemetery. And then in Washington during his presidency, the two boys, um, Willie and Tad, both took sick. Um, they don't know if they had typhoid. They called it Potomac fever. It was probably something from the water because the water supply that came through the taps in the White House just came right out of the Potomac River. Nothing was filtered or anything. So the boys got sick. Well, the boys took a fever really bad. Tad recovered. Willie did not. Willie died. So Willie wound up being buried in Washington. And then, uh, and then of course, the other son, Robert, of course, was fine. He was in school and doing his thing and doing everything that... Um, but then Willie was buried in Washington, and then with their intention that when they, when his presidency was over, his body would move back to Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield with them. Well, they didn't know Lincoln was going to be assassinated either, right. so on his assassination, both his body and the body of his son were moved on the train to Springfield, both taken back. So, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Interesting stuff. Interesting. Uh, Lincoln's body was moved 17 different times before it was finally buried, Whoa. permanently buried. Yeah. Wow. 
of times. Yes, many, many times <laughs> it was, was buried. Spooked, yeah, but I didn't know it was so dead. Off it. dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it was embalmed so much that if you were to open his casket now, he'd probably still look pretty much the same way he looked when he was buried in 1865. Mm-hmm. Because uh, his body was, because of course, now from Washington where he died, all the way en route to Springfield, every city along the way, they stopped. Right. You know, and people wanted to pay their respects and everything. So they actually brought a mortician and undertaker with, and they would touch up the body, you know, with makeup and chalk. And they actually changed the shirt on the body a few times, too, to freshen his corpse up. Uh, and then they would re-embalm him again. So his body wound up having so much embalming fluids in it, it's like mummified. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the last time... Lincoln's Lincoln's body, like I said, was moved around 17 different times before being permanently buried because, number one, when he first was brought over there, the tomb wasn't ready. So he's put in the receiving vault. And then from the receiving vault, when the tomb was finished, he was put in that, but in the cellar, like in the basement of it, until the top was done. And then when they had had it completed, he was put up in a marble sarcophagus up on the first floor for viewing for the public to come through. And then uh, there was a attempt to steal his body, the and they broke they broke the sarcophagus, and, uh, and so then what they did is they wanted to taking the body out, moving it back down, covering it up with boards, covering it with dirt, putting it in a secret spot, doing something different with the sarcophagus and that, and sort of making a dummy sarcophagus where he really wasn't in, but was somewhere else, and and then they had to redo something with the tomb again, something. So seventeen different times he was moved before finally being permanently buried, uh, the, and each and well in five times over the years the coffin was open. Because it was moved so much, they wanted to make certain that is indeed Abraham Lincoln's body still in this coffin, or is this one of the dummy coffins or something that they had one of the decoy coffins? Uh, and finally, September, oh, I think it was September 26th. I might have that date wrong, but I know it was September 1901. Robert Lincoln, the last surviving son, because then by then the other son had died too, Tad, uh, last surviving son, Robert, finally had enough of this and said, look, I want my father and my family buried permanently and enough of this moving around stuff and all this and everything. So finally, 1901, they had the tomb in Springfield redone, rebuilt, everything done. Uh, and before being buried into the floor of the tomb, no longer on the top, where there'd be easy access to his, his coffin, uh, he was put into a steel cage and then cement poured in it. And then his body, the cage lowered down into the ground and then like a couple of tons of cement dropped on top of that. So he's finally permanently buried there. And that. Uh, but before they did this, they opened the coffin up one more time. They opened up the coffin, and um, there were 20, I think 22 people present at the time, maybe 26 people present at the time, Uh, the youngest being a boy, 13 years old. His name was Fleetwood Lindley, Uh, and these people all witnessed it. They said, you know, it was brought up into the rotunda of the building. The coffin was open, and of course it stunk to holy heaven when they opened it up, but they looked in, and you could indeed see that it was the face of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, his eyebrows were gone, but his beard was still intact. The face was very chalk white, but still preserved. You could see it was him. Uh, his suit the, he was buried in was a Brook, Brooks Brothers suit that he wore for his second inaugural. That was the suit he was buried with. He had like a little yellow mold over it. And the flag, uh, and he had gloves on his hands, and the flag that was in his hands just disintegrated. Oh, wow. But nonetheless, it was indeed Abraham Lincoln. Um, the boy, Fleetwood Lindley, that was 13 years old, was in school. And his father was on the board of Oak Ridge Cemetery. Uh, they originally wanted Lincoln buried in Arlington. And Mary Todd Lincoln, his widow, fought for it and said, No, no, I want my husband in Oak Ridge. Mr. Lincoln and I like Oak Ridge. That's where our son Eddie is. We like that. So I'm going to have him buried there. And she won out. You know, being his widow, she got what she wanted. So she had him buried there. But then, of course, they said, Well, all right, then we'll build a big tomb there on a memorial, which they did do. Um, but um, Fleetwood Lindley, his father, was on the board of the Oak Ridge Cemetery, and he actually took his son out of school and said, look, I want you over here, get on your bicycle, ride down here, there's going to be something, they're going to open up Abraham Lincoln's coffin, and I want you here to see this, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event, and he did, and he was the youngest person that saw it, and he lived up until 1965, he was the last living person to look at the face of Abraham Lincoln that was living, and he said he regretted it, later in life he regretted it because he says he had nightmares about it, you know, dreams about it and that. I probably would, too. Yeah. And then there's a very, very interesting, um, there was an old game show on TV called I've Got a Secret, hosted by Gary Moore many, many years ago. And I think it was the 1952 episode of it, and they brought out an old man who came out. Gary Moore actually escorted the man out onto the stage. And you would have like a celebrity panel of four people, and they would have to guess what your secret was. And this man's secret was he was the last person that was in Ford's Theater when he saw John Wilkes Booth shoot Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, so wow. it was. I just thought that was just so fascinating that someone that saw something like that lived into the TV era. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. 
Just and then three know. months after he did the show, he passed away himself. Yeah, so interesting stuff. Um, Lincoln full of Definitely. fascinating facts and stuff like that. Uh, Titanic, another fascinating, interesting one that you could talk forever about. You know, yes. Kylie, what have you got to say before we get started on another subject here? About Lincoln? About anything. Whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> oh, well, what I was going to say about Lincoln is when I was 13, we took an eighth grade field trip to Springfield sure. to the museum and stuff. And they had this room in there where it was like Lincoln's funeral. And I thought it was interesting, and I still remember that they had real flowers in there. And when I asked my teacher why they had like the real big, you know, funeral bouquets and stuff. She oh, said, you mean where his coffin was? Yeah. Where he had the funeral. Yeah, in yeah. the Lincoln Library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she said because that was our president. Yeah. I'm like, but it's a fake funeral. But you know, yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess, I guess, in a way, um, there was it makes a sense. coffin. Um, I used to do tours and things with mm -hmm. the Summit Park District and all that. And then the director that they had, Mary Baraski, she retired. So I don't really do anything with them anymore. But we were at one point, um, they were having some anniversary thing of the Lincoln funeral train. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to get the funeral train to stop in Summit because as it turned out, it actually did. Oh, wow. Summit wasn't even incorporated until 1890, but the train did stop there for a while. And we were going to just try to get the train stopped there and they could come out and give a little speech and talk about it and everything and all that. But they wanted some ridiculous, like $10,000 or something ridiculous just to stop the train there for a few minutes and then go on so we said well that's okay you know we'll see the train in passing that was right. it and then someone else does have a casket they have this replica casket of lincoln's casket um his leaded um black casket that they buried him in and this thing tours around too and they mm -hmm. do talks about the casket and tell all that about it and everything in that too so yeah so interesting stuff lincoln is probably one of our most written about presidents and probably the most portrayed in film too uh, so many films of Lincoln. Uh, I think of George Washington. I think there's like one or two Washington films, and that's it. Oh, they even made a vampire film about oh, Lincoln. Oh, yeah, Fearless, yeah. The Vampire Hunter. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was, that was, right. it was interesting, but it, it, it was, it was, interesting. it was very hokey, yes. but it was interesting. Different perspective. There were, there yes. were a couple of good scenes in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm very much into the vampire thing, too, which right. one of these days we'll talk about. Um, in the fall, I'll be doing a whole program on vampires, too, at, uh, what library? They already booked me for that one. I'm actually adding more things to but it. You're so busy. Pat. I am. Yeah, especially for Every October. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what else have you got going on, Kylie? Or anything coming up, I should say, besides your birthday, April 30th? Um, Nothing coming up that I can talk about. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's but, enough of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, um, Everybody has these secrets. They all have secrets. We did secrets. just investigate yes. the uh, old state uh, county jail in okay. um, Indiana. You and now, probably 200 other people. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it was there was a few of us, but it was pretty cool. There was a lot of jail cells. It's very different from, like, Joliet Prison. Mm -hmm. um, there's more history, I, I feel like. Okay. It, it's, it's more, like, a, it's smaller, so it's more intimate. Um, sure. But... It was just, it, you could feel the energy when you walk in. I mm -hmm. guess, like, part of it was, like, the house where the sheriff used to live and his wife and stuff. So, I guess when the sheriff died, his wife took over, and everyone hated her and tried to run her out, basically. But mm. uh, um, I didn't get to investigate too long there. I couldn't stay too long. But um, from what I got to see, it was it was pretty interesting. Okay, cool. All right. So, so evidence from that to be coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> well... If you got nothing else to say for the time being, anyway, for the time no, being, no, yeah, for the time, no. time <laughs> being, anyway, Titanic, another one with interesting facts. Do a whole program on that too. I like to do these things. I find something that I like, and then I research it, and I do, I do something on it. And what I did was all, because um, there have been so many things written about the Titanic and the sinking Titanic, and so many movies about that, and et cetera, right. et cetera, and so on and so on. What I did was the psychic connection to the Titanic, and I was surprised at how many people that survived it. How it affected the survivors' lives afterwards. These people's lives were never the same again. So many of these people that survived. Uh, there were a lot of suicides among people that survived Titanic. Uh, one gentleman said that he always loved to go to football games and baseball games. And he loved all that stuff. And he says after he survived the sinking Titanic, he could never do it again. Because every time they hit a home run or did, a, or, you know, scored a touchdown and the crowd would stand up and cheer, he says, I got sent back to the North Atlantic in oh, 1912. Wow. And I heard the screams of all the people. Wow. That's all it reminded me of. And I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. He said it, it was just sense. too much. Yeah, it was, just, it was just too much for me. Yeah. PTSD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was too much. Yeah, so many people were affected by it in different days, uh, different ways. One stewardess that survived, she actually survived the sinking of the Titanic. Her name was Annie Robinson. And she was actually, and of course, when the rescue ship Carpathia picked the people up and then took them to New York, they had to find a way to get back to England or wherever it was you were going to, so they did. And Annie, of course, went back to England, which is where she was from, some, from Southampton, I believe. But then she was visiting, going on another ship again then to visit a daughter in New York that she had living in the States. 
And on that voyage, they came into a bad fog. The ship's foghorn sounded, and it just scared the bejeebs out of her, and she didn't want to relive this whole thing all over again. She jumped and committed suicide and killed oh, herself. Wow. Mm. Yeah, kid, killed herself, yeah. Uh, many oh. of the wealthy passengers, too, it's just, you know, they were no exception to the rule either. So it affected people in a lot of different ways. There were many suicides from this, and um, just different ways it affected people. Uh, one lady, oh, I wish I could remember her name, but survived as a child. She survived the Titanic sinking, had a very productive life. She went on to work for the telephone company, married, had a few children, everything. And then just for some strange reason that no one could figure out, in 1954, something just hit her, and she took a pistol and killed herself and committed wow. suicide. Hmm. Yeah, and just and just killed herself. Um, another very prominent first-class ma male passenger that came up under a lot of scrutiny for why he survived when so many other women perished. But the whole thing with Titanic was it just, you know, if you were in the right spot at the right time, you can get in the boat. You know, because the, there was like the women and children first type thing and all that. But if there were some other officers that were in charge of boats, if there were no other passengers around, yeah, sure, go ahead and jump in, and you were welcome to go. And that's basically what Dr. Dr. Dodge, Dr. Washington Dodge, that's basically what he did is he just got into the boat and away he went in that. But then he came up under a lot of scrutiny because he survived and so many other passengers passed away and did not. And he was involved in banking and financing and things. And then there was some sort of a crazy, about 1918, something going on with some insider trading. And he was involved with the scandal and him not wanting to get involved with another scandal again, same thing, took a pistol and put it to the side and killed himself. Mm. Yeah. Dr. William Frawlenthal, psychiatrist. Uh, a lot of early psychiatry. Now, 1912, there wasn't a lot of psychiatry. Psychiatry was still in its infancy, kind of new. And, of course, there was no such thing as grief counseling. If you went through something like this, you were just basically expected to right. pick yourself it. up, continue, and go on with life. And oh, di, oh, da. That was the end of that. Uh, Dr. Frawlenthal, actually, his wife got into a lifeboat. And then as he saw the boat lowering off the decks of the Titanic, he saw the boat wasn't filled. So basically he jumped. He jumped off the deck and jumped into the boat. Landed on another woman passenger and wound up breaking a couple of her ribs. Ugh. But nonetheless, everything was okay. Uh, survived the sinking. Later on in New York City, wound up opening a medical facility uh, in uh, a high-rise. Uh, I think about 14 floors at that time considered a high-rise or a pretty high building in those days. And um, he had a whole floor up there for psychiatric help, which he did a lot of charity work in, in, in all of that. And then, uh, for whatever reason, decided to jump. Just jumped from the building, killed himself, committed suicide, and his wife, who survived the disaster, spent the rest of her life in an insane asylum. Wow. Yeah. So it hit people in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Astor, Madeline Astor, John Jacob Astor, wealthiest man on board the ship. Uh, his young bride, he was Astor was 42 years old, divorced his first wife, and actually had a son, Vincent Astor, that was as old, or I think even maybe a year older than the woman he married now. He married Madeline Force Astor, someone he had known all his life, and she was 19 years old, and he married her. And she was pregnant with his child, and they were actually in Europe and in Egypt having a long extended, you know, in those days when you traveled, you traveled for three or four months. You know, you didn't, you were in a hurry to get back, especially if you had money like they did. And so they were coming back on Titanic, and of course she got into a boat, he asked, asked her, John Jacob asked her, asked, could he accompany his wife because she was expecting? And he says, nope, I'm sorry, you know, only women and children on this boat. So he asked the number of the boat, thinking later on he'd be able to find the boat and reunite with his wife. But, of course, he never survived. His body was actually crushed. Oh, my God. Uh, and they, ident they identified his body by um, his monogrammed handkerchief and the amount of money and cash and identification yeah. he had in his wallet because uh, he was carrying about $7,000 in cash. Not many people oh in 1912 mm -hmm. walked around yeah, with right. $7,000 cash mm -hmm. in their pockets. That's yeah. a big chunk of change. Uh, but yeah. Madeline Force Astor, of course, then went on, had the child. John Jacob Astor, the seventh, I think he was, uh, and she inherited one of the Astor mansions in New York, as well as, uh, oh, I think something like $10 million and all that. And then she went on to have three other marriages, which all failed. Uh, and then she herself wound up overdosing on drugs and oh, killing wow. herself around 1947. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, strange things kind of happened to a lot of the folks from Titanic that survived. Yeah. You know, and it, in a way, it kind of reminds me of listening to King Tut's curse. All the people who went into the tomb, that opened the tomb, came out and had all this bad luck. Except for the man that actually found it, Howard Carter. Right. Howard Carter lived a very long, productive life and nothing. The whole reason that the whole King Tut's uh, curse started with Lord Carnarvon. Uh, Lord Carnarvon and his daughter Evelyn, Lady Evelyn, I think Evelyn Nesbeth, his daughter, they were the benefactors right. and sponsors of Howard Carter, and they sponsored his archaeological digs. And, of course, nothing was coming up, nothing was coming up and everything. So the Carnarvon party left Egypt, 
they left the Valley of the Kings to go back to Cairo, where there was electricity and it was a little more civilized in 1920, 1922. And um, then all of a sudden, Howard Carter found the tomb. So he sent a wire to Cairo and said, you better get back here, we're on to something. So they came back, and then when they opened the tomb, Howard uh, Carter, of course, was fine, did, did all the work, all the excavating and all the you know preparations of the tomb and removing everything out. Very patient man. It took him forever to empty that tomb. Very meticulous about what he did. Uh, fortunate for us that he found it and not someone else, because someone else may have not done the good job that he did and preserved a lot of that. Uh, but anyway, Lord Carnarvon was shaving and cut himself, and then from that it became infected, and he died from the infection oh my God. from that. So they said, oh, the mummy's curse has struck, right. and all this. Right. And um, anybody a fan of Downton Abbey? Oh, High Clear Castle? Yes. That's Carnarvon's. Yeah, Carnarvon. He's the, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, or sixth Earl of Carnarvon, the present owner of High Clear Castle. And Lord Carnarvon, the one that just died from the supposed mummy curse, is buried there on the estate. So, yeah. So they have a connection to that, so... Um, yeah, so people have a way of kind of creating these curses. Right. They even also said that there was a mummy being transported on the Titanic uh, that had some sort of a curse uh, that yeah. did that. And uh, all the That's research and everything I did happened. on Titanic, the only thing I could find of any Egyptian thing was um, uh, the unsinkable Molly Brown. Molly, Molly Brown, Margaret mm -hmm. Tobin Brown. She never liked being called Molly Brown. She liked being called Margaret Brown. Uh, she was carrying four crates of models from Egypt, ancient models that she had purchased, and she's going to put them in the Denver Museum. But, of course, they all went down. Uh, but she did have a little Ushapti figure that she carried for good luck with her. Uh, but uh, as far as any mummy's curse or anything sinking the Titanic, no, I don't think so. I think it was the iceberg that sunk yeah. the Titanic. <laughs> Poor judgment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They actually found some photos now, too, that they think were the berg that sunk the Titanic that people took. Because they said there was like some paint on the iceberg, and they believe that's the one that actually struck the ship. Interesting. And, and sunk it. So, yeah. So a lot of interesting things about these subjects. And uh, so much has been written, and will continue to be written, and so much has been filmed. Um, collected Titanic memorabilia for many, many years. Um, the only thing I've not been able to find is the very, very first film. They just do not have a print of it. Um, I did come up with an old print of the Edison, 1910 Edison Frankenstein film, which was the first Frankenstein film, and I did get a print of that one. But there was a 1912 film about the Titanic, which was the very first film in 1912, and it was just a few months after the sinking, and it starred Dorothy Gibson, who was a silent film star, and she actually survived the sinking, and the costume that she wore for the film was the dress that she wore off the ship oh, wow. on the Titanic, yeah. And it was called How I Was Saved from the Titanic, and actually what it was about her falling in love with one of the crew members and getting married and everything it was an entirely different thing Jack and Rose but yeah story. yeah but Jack, a print of they have post they have po yeah they have prints of it and posters of it and everything but they don't have a print of the film well the, the most important gone. was there enough room on that board for jack you there know, was a I jack dawson over in over in halifax <laughs> over, over in halifax nova scotia there are three i think there's 300 graves well not 300 it's a little less than that because 300 bodies were right. actually, of the 1,500 people that drowned in the sea from Titanic, 300 bodies were picked up. Uh, they did, the White Star Line did send a funeral ship called the Mac A. Bennett. And they sent them with coffins, with ice, with, with a retinue of embalmers and morticians on there and everything to embalm in any of the bodies that they found picking up floating in the sea. Uh, and of course, people that could be identified, for instance, they did identify John Jacob Astor. So naturally, his family claimed his body, had it buried in their private funeral, you know, their private burial. But some people, just no one claimed them or anything. So in Halifax, Nova Scotia, they're all buried there. And there is a Jack Dawson. And so many people, right after the 19, what was that, 1997, when the Titanic film came out, so many yeah, people made pilgrimage born. to visit. And it wasn't the Jack right. Dawson, because the characters in that film were actually fictitious right. in the 1997 right. film. But they saw Jack Dawson, so they figured, oh, that's Jack, you know, and Jack he was and Rose. Probably yeah, the real Jack Dawson was probably sixty-ish, yeah. maybe. Uh, there yeah. was a little grave there of a baby. They did oh. find an infant child buried there, unidentified, and the crew actually paid for the funeral for the little boy to be buried there. And then they did some. Um, oh, they exhumed the body and that, and they did some DNA testing. They actually think that the boy was an ancestor of a Swedish family, a Swedish immigrant child. And they did some uh, DNA testing on the relatives, and, and it proved not to be. Wow. So they still don't know. So he's sort of still an unknown child that's buried there. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be kind of cool to have like a virtual reality video game of the Titanic. They do. So they have oh, a they virtual reality. They got virtual reality. I don't know about that. The Titanic. They got a whole I've virtual noticed. reality. You could travel the ship, the whole thing of the ship. Yeah. But is it like the real ship, like somebody? Because I know, like, 
it's, when they it's film the virtual pretty, reality. pretty close to it. Mm. Pretty darn close to it. Yeah, it's pretty authentic looking. Yeah, yeah. Huh. And it goes through all the first class state rooms, all the first class public rooms, all the way down the decks through the bottom. Goes through the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna yeah, have does. to try so, that. Yeah, so somebody beat you to it. You're like me. I come up with I'm these gonna, good. I'm I come up with good ideas, and then I find it. somebody already did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a lot of stuff has been written and will continue to be written about Titanic. Yeah. Uh, the last surviving Titanic person that survived the sinking died, and that was Milavina Dean, and she was a little child, uh, and she survived the sinking, and um, she wound up going into a retirement home in England and having to sell a lot of things to pay for it. And um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet kind of caught sight of her plight and everything. And he says, oh, now, wait a minute. We made a lot of money off Titanic. and So they paid for everything. For her. They paid all her expenses and everything for her. Yeah, and she was the last survivor of the Titanic. Aww. Yeah. And then we had the Titanic orphans, too, the Navitrol twins. A lot of people don't know about that. Their father was actually divorced from the mother. They lived in France. And they were divorced, and the father was actually kidnapping the children. And he was taking them over to New York, to the States. And he was going to live here with them. And he traveled under the name Hoffman. And the father put the boys in the boats, was not allowed access to the boat himself. He stepped back, and the boys went, and that was the end of that. And, of course, no one knew who they were. And they only spoke French. And fortunately for them, there was another passenger oui, oui. in the boat that spoke French. And she kind of oui. took them under her, her wings and took care of them and everything. And then the newspapers all went about the Titanic orphans, these two little, cute, little curly-headed boys. And their mother in France saw it and said, oh, my gosh, those are my sons. Yeah, you know? I remember yeah. hearing that. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. And they lived to a ripe old age, too, and then passed away. So, yeah. So, rather interesting how these things kind of, you know, so many stories about it that have, mm -hmm. you know, gone on and all these, any kind of historical event like that. Um, Anything that you can think of, uh, Lincoln's assassination, sinking the Titanic, uh, many people about uh, the 9-11. Uh, right, Twin probably Towers. a right. big impact. Yeah, all that. Know. People still have many stories about that, uh, about John F. Kennedy's assassination. Right. So much has been written and said and will continue to be written and, and all that. So these stories do kind of go on and go on in the public's uh, imagination, the public's fascination. So, yeah. Just another thing to make a movie about. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. At least they're good. If, I don't mind. I don't mind make a movie if they have something to say. Mm -hmm. If they got something to actually say about it, I don't mind that. You know. And of course, you know, entertainment's okay too if it's done in the right way. That's good. So yeah, yeah. So interesting. So, with that said, I'll let somebody else do the talking now. <laughs> well, I'll just say this as the uh, as the skeptic in the room. I think I'm the one skeptic who I don't really believe in ghosts or the paranormal. In fact, I'd argue against it, but I'm not here to fight. Okay. Oh, um, no, not no, but Throwing my fist. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> a particular reason why you don't. Uh, that's a long story. Just because you've never witnessed it yourself or no e actual no, evidence I, or I've proof? No, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys unless something unexplained happened in my life. That okay. I would have been crushed. Anyway, okay. long, long story. But So I'm just curious on the idea of like mass casualty events, mass casualty events like Titanic or sure. the assassination of Lincoln, anything that kind of grabs the public's attention. Again, this question comes from ignorance because I don't really move in the circles. Well, I do, but I don't pay attention to this kind of stuff, like the theories that might have developed. You were, when you were first introducing the subject of the Titanic, you know, you gave us that really exhaustive, cool idea of all of the people who kind of, you know, they got a little upset in the sure. head and, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do we think, has there been, have there been theories advanced about was this, I mean, legitimate, credible, not just, you know, uh, wives' tales type stuff? About, no. like, a paranormal thing? No, it actually did happen. It really is not, that has nothing to do with paranormal. Well, no, no, no. no. I mean, as for, yeah. like, you know, a curse. Or well, some oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, obviously, paranormal. yeah, so obviously the, the, the iceberg is what did it, right? right. And then, then the, sure. the, whatever, the uh, yeah. the recklessness of the crew, right, or whatever. Yeah. But the, I, I've a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say this, they advance the idea that in any such a mass casualty event or any mass drama event like this, there will be an impression of energy. Of course. Right? Yes, yeah. So I'm uh, the same thing, too, like in New York with 9-11, where the Twin Towers were. Yeah. Many people go by that spot and just say, an, an attorney acquaintance of mine, uh, Gene Burks, um, he had to go, because he goes to New York quite frequently and went to New York not too long after that and had to go, and he says, it was just awful. He says, you're like, you know, you're like miles away and you just smell the death. Yeah. He says something. He says every time he goes back to New York now, he still smells that. It just right. stays with him. Embedded. You know, yeah, it's just embedded in him. You know, it just stays there. You know, so it, it just makes these impressions on people. You know, when you go through. So now, some people, it, it affects everybody differently. Some right. people just shrug their shoulders, move on, and go on with life, and that's the end of that. And some people, nothing until many, many years later, something triggers it off, and then something, you know, you just don't know. Everybody's different, you know. Yeah. With these things, yeah. I'm curious whether that's more, I guess the question I have, and this is just a, I'm just speaking out loud, it's more, I guess it's a rhetorical question, if anything else. 
Is that more a function of just hit uh, human psychology, or is there something metaphysical going on there? It could be a combination of both, but yeah. I think it's probably a little more psychological. Yeah, something, that's right. Yeah, something in the mind. Yeah. Now, as far as any hauntings with Titanic, um, well, yeah, you can say what you want about that. But I know where the, the, where the sinking happened, where the ship went down. For, of course, you know, they say, well, ships avoided going past that site. Well, of course they did, because right after the disaster, they moved the shipping routes further south to be more away from the ice flows. So mm -hmm. naturally, ships avoided it. But ships did avoid that spot for many years and go around it and not want to go over the spot where the ship sank. And, you know, and it wasn't until 1985 when they actually did find the wreck down at the bottom, Bob Ballard, when they actually found it. Uh, for many, many years, they thought they would never actually find it. And then they, as technology advanced, they did, you know, s you know zone in on it and found it. Yeah. Get, get those guys to do some work in the Bermuda Triangle. There's still some things that have gone Oh, so much they can't explain. <laughs> right. Yeah, Sorry, so many yeah. things they can't explain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Lincoln's assassination with Ford's Theater, supposedly there was a curse on Ford's Theater. Right after the Lincoln assassination, the theater was shut down. Boom, that was it. They never performed in it again. And then what actually happened was Bob... Was it Bob Ford? No, Bob Ford's the man that shot uh, um, Jesse James. But I think his name was Bob Ford, too, that owned Ford's Theater. He owned the theater in Washington. The government paid him for the theater, and they took it. And for many, many years, they just kept it shut. That was it. And then what they did is they opened it up as government offices, and they put offices in there and everything and, and different things in that. And then around the turn of the century, the whole second floor of Ford's Theater actually collapsed and killed a lot of people. Oh, wow. A lot of people were killed in Ford's Theater, and then again they shut it down. And then they opened it up. Now now it's like a national theater. They have it all restored. They do perform mm -hmm. in it. Uh, they do have Lincoln's box up there restored. It looks the way it looked when Lincoln occupied the box on that night and everything. Course, yeah. And they do. I don't know if they've ever performed the play he saw in there again, <laughs> Our American Cousin. I don't know if they ever did that. <laughs> but uh, did you ever see the play? It's no. it's it's a 19th century comedy, and it's really it, by today's standards, it's just it's just not funny. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just isn't funny. I'm but in the 19th up, century, they howled with laughter at this, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's just interesting how these different things kind of take their twists and their turns. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, similar to what we were talking about before the show, how being paranormal investigators, sure. we hear about all these alleged mm -hmm. haunted locations. And most of the time, it turns out to be the owners just trying to drum up business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah I I do good believe advertising tactic. In yeah, I've had paranormal, that happen. but yeah. I'm the biggest skeptic. I need all to paranormal. See it to it. If you're a good paranormal right. investigator, you should all be skeptics, right? Because a good deal of what you do with the paranormal, especially in paranormal investigations is try to debunk or disprove. And that, mm -hmm. right. Something happens, and you go, and I've said this many times, something happens, okay, one person sees it, two, three, four people are seeing something or experiencing something there, so the team goes in and they want to right. investigate. Okay, you go through all the sources. Was it something with the lighting, something with the electrical, something, the you know, who, what, what, yeah, whatever it could right. be. That's And when you exhaust all the logical sources, you say, well, we don't know what's actually causing right. this, we can't find anything, we may not have any tangible evidence of this, but by the same token, we can't disprove it because we have nothing to show right. what would cause it to happen. So it's a possible right. paranormal experience, right. something out of the norm here. That's why 90% of the time I go on an investigation, I go in blind because I just... It's best wanted, to do. Yeah, I just I, want to be you're not based influenced. on my energy. Exactly. Yeah, I and don't want to know. Yeah, I, I'd rather, that's all I am too. I'd rather not know. And you probably find the same thing, because I know I do with readings, like when I do palm readings, you probably do the same thing with tarot readings. If the person you're reading, it's much better that I don't know that person oh, yeah. than right. if they're yeah, a friend yeah. or something. Because with right. friends or family, you already know some things about right. them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know and that can always influence what you're, you know. Despite your best efforts, yes. It's yeah. hard to get uh -huh. out of the way of yeah, your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But we've seen so many things. That oh, we've sure. Debunked. Now, and especially, and I know people might get on me, orbs. Mm -hmm. orbs. If I see another orb picture <laughs> in a dusty attic yeah, or a dusty that, they're, basement they're, they're just very, or I'm walking in dirt outside. The orbs are probably one of the easiest I, things to debunk. I don't even debunk. get excited about I, them anymore. Yeah, the orbs are probably okay. one of the easiest things to debunk. Right, but yeah. then yeah. try to like explain it. Right, right. There, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Unless yeah. the face is going, la, 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 la yeah. sticking uh -huh. its tongue I out totally or whatever. Agree. Some of them are right. legit, but so many of them are, it, it, and there right. are so many. Or you know. it could be pareidolia. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see a face in the clouds. Yeah. It's yeah. Not yeah. A ghost. Yeah. It's a speck but of dust. Yeah. Biggest skeptic, but yeah, I have yeah. seen some very it's peculiar easy, things. Um, I, I think that. some people want to believe so badly that they sort of stretch right. things out, mm -hmm. and you kind of make yourself see or hear something which really isn't there, but you're kind of correct. You know, yeah. A lot of a lot of places that we go to are like supposedly you know the most haunted places in America, and a lot of the times 
I just it's, don't feel eh. anything. You yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. When nothing DMs. happens. And when we went. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of the times, yeah, there's things that happen, yeah. of course. But I agree. a lot of the times, crickets. Nothing. Just and it's crickets. not going to happen Absolutely every crickets. time you're there. Like you no. see yeah. on some of the ghost shows on TV. I call yeah. it Hollywood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's all yeah. Hollywood. We've that, that's well, something. Just about, just about, every, just about every one of these shows right. we do, that's something. Did you feel that show? You know, yeah. and, and, and now oh, good I thing. my hair. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, see, now, 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 now right. with those shows, people, it's I Hollywood. get asked that a lot. They say, Bob, which shows do you watch? And I don't watch any of them. <laughs> and I have a very good reason for not watching because I don't have cable. And most right. of those are on cable, so I don't watch them. But occasionally I do get a glimpse of it. Like if I'm by my brother's house or something and something happens to be on, I watch it and that. But good thing, bad thing. Okay, good thing, well, okay, it, it, well, I'll, let me start with the bad thing. Bad thing, okay, people watch this, our show, and then they say, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to take pictures, and I'm going to run a recorder, exactly. and I'm going to get all this stuff, and I'm going to come back with and all this, nothing. and it's going to be fantastic. And then nothing happens, and they're very disappointed, and they're Correct. very disillusioned. And they say, oh, this is all a bunch of bunk. Now, <laughs> good thing about it. Okay, if someone does watch one of these shows, and they're new to the paranormal, and this does maybe inspire them to maybe take it a little more seriously and maybe investigate and go into it a little more, that does serve a good purpose. So good thing, bad thing. Well, for me, it's finding new locations that I've never heard about. Um, And I think it's, my love is St. Augustine. Yeah, St. Augustine's great. I like that. And you know what? It's the old city, you know, that's what I think I love The oldest school in the United States, the oldest church in the United States. Have I ever seen anything spooky-dooky there? Not really. And that you city know? has a big pirate connection, too. Oh, it yeah. does, yeah, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great town. It great is. city. Yeah. Yeah, my love is New Orleans. Yeah. Something another about city. it. I really want something there. about yeah. New Orleans. My f- very first trip yeah, I did to New Orleans, one. a month later, I had to go back. Just a vibe. And it's yeah. been this love affair that's continued all, you know, And if you've part never been, do not go during Mardi Gras. Oh, no, no, no. You have to go off-season. Where you can explore, and not just New Orleans. you got to go in the swamp oh, yeah, tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bayou you know, tours oh, and go to, go to the Myrtles. That's right. Go to the Myrtles Plantation the and go to the, yeah. Bob gets uh, all the beads, too. That's Every right. Oh, Bob and his beads. Yeah, so. he comes the be- back you know, the with tons are, of them. The beads right. are everywhere. New Orleans <laughs> is a party town. That's right. You know, it's St. Patrick's why you go. Day. It's, a, it's St. Patrick's Day, but we have a party. St. Joseph's Day, but we have a party. It's raining today. Yep, let's have a party. Nothing wrong with Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's just the kind of town it is. You got the vampire bar. Oh, I, I'm loving the vampire. Now, the vampire yeah, thing, I'm really... Um, yeah, shop where it's stand across the street and it's crooked. It's literally... Yeah, that's love one of the it. old... The, the uh, Levite's Blacksmith Shop yes. on the corner of Bourbon and St. Philip. Every time I go down there, I have somebody take my picture on that corner. It's just like yes. my little thing I do. Oh, I you need know. to go back. And uh, that is like the oldest building in the Mississippi Valley. And it's also a very haunted yes. building, too. That so building I've is heard. haunted. It does. And I've had some feelings I've been in, in that there, place. But yeah. Well, I had an experience happened there, but it was nothing to do with the paranormal. I took one of the walking tours, mm-hmm. and we stopped. That was right. our, that was like our drink stop. So we stopped there for a rest, and we did. Our, and the guy was, I think his name was Midian, and he was a magician. Yeah, you know it's Midian. It's the same guy we had. Yeah, you know Midian. Yeah, he's still there. And he good yeah. to know. Good and to he, know. He, he does we magic. went back to his house after this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drinks. Yeah. And Pretty does ma- And so he was, you know, sitting there, he's still and he came there. and he took the card and he put the card in. You know, we're sitting in the courtyard having our drink in the blacksmith shop, and he took the card, put the card in between my hand, and then he grabbed my hands and he swirled them around, and I felt something slip. I felt something. I says, "Oh, son of a gun!" I looked and he took my watch, <gasps> and, I, and I didn't say anything about it. I didn't say. I says, "I want to see what's going to go on with this," you know. Oh, and yeah. so of course, then we took the card out, and yes, that was the card, and everybody, you know, clap, clap, clap applause, 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 and. Nothing about my watch, nothing about my watch, nothing about my watch. So I'm waiting. I'm says, well, let me see where this is going to go. So, um, okay, we're getting ready to go. And I says, okay, come on. It's, you know, it's time for us to get going and finish with the tour and everything. He said, sir, what time do you have? And I said, well, you ought to know. You got my watch. <laughs> and yeah. everybody howled with laughter. And he came up to me and said, how'd you know I took it? I said, you're good. You felt I it, felt yeah. It. I felt you're something. good, but you're not yeah. that I good. Says, I, felt, I felt the slip. Yeah, I felt the slip. I'm going to have to find the picture yeah. of wow. uh, me and Midia and I'll send it to oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, I can't believe you still but I'm starting But I'm starting to become friends with the vampires down there, too, because they're all of a sudden now, um, they're having like a little vampire neighborhood. Cool. The Vampire <laughs> Cafe is there. Do they really and drink vampires blood? headquarters and their store and everything. So they're having like a little... They're having like their own little. They've always had a nice cult of them down there. Yes. Where do they get it? What did he do? Volunteers. We're whispering. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> do they drink blood? Well, I guess it, they okay, do. Okay, it's um. Where do they get it? Exactly. It, it can, human it can donation. be now. Some of them don't drink the blood. Right. Some of them will drink animal blood. Some drink human blood, but the human blood's given by someone that donates to do I it. Now they know. do it a different way. They do it through the back. There's like a hole they do in the back and a vein in the back. 
and they take Ew. the blood out of that and they do it that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Just a little bloodletting. Nothing to worry oh. about. Now, the Vampire Cafe is cool. When you go in the Vampire Cafe, everything is vampire themed and everything is blood. All the wines have right. a blood name to it. And they have a drink. Uh, I forgot what the drink was. Um, I was going to get one, but then I didn't. I wish, kind of wish now, I, well, next trip I'll get one because it's served in a little plasma thing. <laughs> Oh, and that's wow. your souvenir. You I, keep the, I need to see this place. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Vampire Cafe. I really yeah. Know it's right on Royal Street, um, not too far from the Lalori Mansion okay. and uh, and um, the Gallier House. Yeah. Because okay. the Lalori Mansion is eleven forty Royal Street, and then there's that little brick building in between, and then there's the Gallier House. Correct. Gallier House. Yes. Is right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to go back now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but New Orleans is a very haunted take. city. Oh, you have to. Go. Uh, you better it's go there. If you're going to yes. go to New Orleans, go. Don't wait too long to go because the city is actually sinking. Yes. Yeah. Eventually, that in oh, Miami. Know, yeah. 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 Eventually, New Orleans and Miami are right? just going to be underwater. underwater. Eventually, okay. time to come. Yeah. They sink about two inches a year. Yeah. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. When they when they started off, they were about 15 feet above sea level. Now they're 15 feet below sea level. Right. The only thing keeping them afloat are the dikes and levees, which they keep building up right. and improving them to keep the water out. You know. So, right. You're walking down yeah. the street and then. Now Miami's the trouble is entirely different. Miami's having trouble with the sea just coming in, and it's just flooding and it's getting into their fresh water supply and everything. They're having bad trouble with it because Miami's just right there mm. on the water and that. So yeah. But um, any town like that, where you have a lot of water around it like that, you're going to have a lot of psychic. In an old town, too. Right. The older the town, you're going to have a lot more history and a lot more things that have happened there. So, yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. I like uh, like New Orleans. I like St. I was St. Augustine, I was only in once. Uh, as many places I've been to, it's just something about New Orleans. That's my right. draw. I've always been drawn back it's to it. It's got a vibe. Yeah, it's I've got always a vibe. I've yeah. always been drawn back to New Orleans, always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the places I've gone. I've been to San Francisco one time. Very nice. I'd like to go back there again. It doesn't have to draw for me like right. New Orleans does. You know. Right. Yeah. He gets a new voodoo doll every year and just pokes it. Yeah. Is that what it voodoo doll down there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo. And Re- Reverend Zombie's actually moved. Okay. Reverend Zombie's voodoo shop used to be right across from Pat O'Brien's on St. Peter Street. 218 St. Peter Street, but it actually moved and now it's on Royal Street, Reverend Zombies. But Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo is still on Bourbon. Still there. It's still there on Bourbon Street, yeah. yeah. I still have a few yeah. candles from there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always get something. Love it. And the cemetery tours. Got to take the cemetery tours. And the churches. Tours. Oh, yeah. the, churches. the churches. Old St. Louis Cathedral. Right. And then um, Old Our Lady, of Ram- uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe over on Rampart Street. 411, 411 North Rampart. I was going there and... Uh, that's a neat church, too. I like that church. Beautiful yeah. city. That's the mortuary chapel. That's where a lot of the sick people, when they used to get the yellow fever epidemics, they took them to Our Lady of Guadalupe rather than the more prestigious St. Louis Cathedral. That was like more for the uppity. You couldn't go right. there. They took them to the other church on the back of town, you know. So, yeah, it's cool. It's cool town. New Orleans is great, yeah. I can go on and on and on about New Orleans. <laughs> I can go on and on and on about the Titanic. <laughs> I can go on and on and on about Lincoln's assassination. And the ghosts. And, and ghosts, so oh, yeah. Well, they're all, these, these things are all related to ghosts right. in, in some one way or another. They all are, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think most people that come into the paranormal, I, I think everybody, everybody, I don't care who it is, I think everybody's had an experience with the paranormal in one way or another. Everybody's oh, yeah. had some experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and usually people's first experiences, I like to say, and I found this just from talking with other people, to what I based it on, is it's usually a loved one that they have the first paranormal experience with. A loved one's passing and something... They're involved with that, and then it sort of gets them into it, you know. Now, not everybody. It's interesting because as a skeptic, that immediately gets my skeptic fangs coming out. I'm like, really? I mean, uh, no, <laughs> I mean, that, no, it, it's not a lack of compassion. It's more like that seems like right. very easily psychologically explained. Yeah, because yeah. it's hitting me. the emotional core. Yeah, but a certain a certain song comes on that you have no explanation for. Yeah. It was like a favorite song of dad's or mom's or something. Oh, yeah. A certain smell of a cologne or a cigar right. smell or smoke. Oh, my gosh, dad smoked those cigars, and now I smell it, and there's nothing there. That you, you know, so, yeah, you know, so yep. the emotions do run high with that, you know. Yeah, yeah, it does. So I think a lot of people experience that first with that, but then um, there's other ways you experience the paranormal, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I've had things happen that I just can't explain. Right. Can't, can't, just mm-hmm. no explanation for it. Oh yeah, no. It's you know. when, again as a skeptic, I've had plenty of things that I, I, I like to call them. I simply can't explain them. Right. To me, it's intellectually irresponsible for me personally to take it any beyond any any point beyond that. It happened. I can't explain it. There's no rational way to put it in a box, and so it sits up on the shelf. Yet, right. And but then this, yet you're skeptical of it, which is sort of controversial. No, I'm, it, it, I, it, I acknowledge happened, that it happened, and I happened, acknowledge the attest the attestations of other people. No explanation for it. 
but yet I'm skeptical of it. Because it's very... You never experience the it. Skepticism, say, yeah, you're a skeptic, the skepticism but, is like a levy against the tide pushing in of most people coming in and immediately trying to fill in that blank with a prepackaged cultural gotcha. idea okay. of a ghost, yeah, a right. shadow creature, a yeah. uh, cryptid, you yeah. know, a demon, something like this, right? It. Where I'm like, this doesn't make sense. We can just put yeah. it over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, that happens a lot, a little too often in life for my comfort. And so I don't, I'm not telling people that these things don't happen. I'm saying, yeah. let's just be a little bit more careful about how we describe them. Yeah. And I totally agree with you. Yeah. Again, being in the business <laughs> yeah. we're in, you know, the stories we hear from people, from clients, and you try to talk to these people, talk them down off the ledge, but they're so adamant. No, no, I know what I saw. It was a go. I'm like, well, see, many that's people, a reflection. The saying, era that we or, live in, so many people are influenced by the media. And right. by what mm -hmm. they see. There's exactly. so much stuff oh, right. out there that they're so influenced by that where maybe right. in years past this wouldn't have been a, a, that big of a deal. You know, and we um, didn't have the names people like that we I do speak now. with today yeah. Yeah. that I tend to, you know, I, you know, this is another thing I say all the time and something I like to stick with. And I don't know how anybody else feels about this, but most people that relate their paranormal stories to me, something that's happened to them or whatever like that, and people that I like to take as good, credible witnesses are people that are just basically just telling me my story. And Bob, you take it or you leave it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not selling you this. I'm not making money on it. Yeah. I'm not, right. There's no no gain for me out of this in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. I'm just telling you like it is. They're not trying to prevail you know. something. About so, you. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you take it for what it is. And those are people I like to take as really good witnesses to the paranormal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know. Everybody feels differently about it, but that's how I feel about it. Right. So, yeah. 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 I mean, certainly as a tarot reader, I get more often than you might think. Well, actually, no, probably about as exactly as much as some of in the room, I think. Right. I get a lot of people coming up during a tarot reading, a tarot card reading, and will tell me some oh, paranormal sounding things. No, yeah. which is awesome, which is great. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Um, but yes, I, I agree with what you just said. There are the ones who will just sort of lay it out because... Mm -hmm. Yeah. They want to talk about it or it's pertinent to the reading or something. And it's not, what do you think of this? Or what can I sell you? you know, it, it, I don't right. get, it's just an earnest explanation of something yeah. that yeah. they right. have a question or have a thought about. Versus the phone rings and somebody starts talking to me, Bob, I got your number from so-and-so. And they right. start talking to me. And I, I listen to them and, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, fine, I think it's you know, kind yeah. of an, ag yeah. an acknowledgement, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, for yeah. I'm not crazy. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. No, no. No one should ever feel that way. No. no you should Except for, not. you know, we've talked about this in the past we'll meet certain people and it may be the energy we're giving off where we scare living bejesus out of them. Oh yeah. In Florida, I told you about that little story. We went on the local ghost tour. Halfway through the tour, the lady stops, stares at me. She's like, are you a paranormal investigator? I go, maybe. It's not my time to shine. It's her time to yeah, shine. I never right. go to these this things. Is my, this saying, is my oh, show. I'm yeah. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I never go in saying that. So I just said, well, maybe. She's like, oh, well, are you a little gifted? I'm like, hmm, maybe. <laughs> you know, and I just left it at that. Mm -hmm. At the end of the night, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go talk to her. I'm going to find out, you know, what's going on. Why did she ask me that? Why are you in my head? She, couldn't get away. <laughs> she could not get away from me fast enough. Wow. Like her little feet. And but she then was it like, makes me wonder, why bring it up in the first right. place? I'm like, all right. Hmm. Yeah. Am I scary? Did I scare her? Is that the energy I'm giving off? But so, and that, I mean, you're kind of scary first, shell. Well, thanks. <laughs> like, if, she, if, she would, if she would give you a question like this, she's sort of right. looking for a response Back it from off. you. And but then to run away really. from you, why would she even bring it up in the first she place? All she said was, oh, I just know. Demons. Kind of a funky way of doing right. it. Now, there are some people I don't care to be around that do kind of oh. give off negative vibes. Energy it's it's like me. Yeah. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. They drain you. Oh, they do. Some people do. And I don't, yeah, there's certain people I don't care to be around. Is it me, Bob? Huh? Is it me? Oh, not you. Oh. Yeah, I'm oh, never around right. you that much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> right. No, but there but. are just certain people I don't care to. Mm, you yeah, know. just their yeah, negative energy. Yeah, I just right. don't want to be around certain people. You know, you just don't. Even know. if they don't realize yeah. it, that yeah. they're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Get out of here. Yeah. Some people are just born with it, too. The mm -hmm. negativeness. Yeah. Just can't get out of it. And it's unfortunate, but it is very true. Life has people that are givers and has takers. Mm. Mm. Right. There are people in life that are givers and they give of themselves, they give of their life and other and there are other people that are vampires that take, exactly. and, take and drain people. Yeah, it's like a vampire type. Drain people of your yes. energies, drain you of your ideas, drain you of your, you know, it's like, oh. And some of those people, you, I, I, sometimes I walk, there are some people, like when I'm around, if I don't put my guard up, I, I walk away with a mm -hmm. headache. I walk right, away yeah. with a migraine from certain people. You know. Right. Yeah, if I don't keep my guard feel up, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but I'm getting kind of good at it, especially when I meet people, first impressions, oh, yeah. I can kind of, I'm getting kind of like where I'm kind of like, hmm, I don't know about this person, this person, yeah, they're okay, I kind of like yeah. them, but this one here, I don't know. Pretty mm, much within know. the first few I, this minutes, person, I'll I just, can tell. This person, I like to just kind of say right. hello and goodbye, and that's about it, you exactly. know, <laughs> you know, that way, so, yeah, you know, 
Right. Otherwise, get out of my bubble. But it is yeah. pretty Have cool. Have a nice day. Like, being in this industry, how many, like, really awesome people that you meet. Oh, oh definitely. You do. I mean, oh, yeah. 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 We all met each other. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. There's, yeah. For for the one or two maybe maybe not so good yeah. people that you meet, there are 110 mm-hmm. other really exactly. nice folks. True. So, yeah, you do meet a lot of good people. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's one of the things I have to so often explain to, I suppose, people outside the circle who know that I'm in these circles, like, right, if this makes any sense. Right. Or, oh, you're just a bunch of charlatans, and I'm like, okay, yes, that is true. There are those out there. <laughs> well, you know look at I our get, bank accounts because we're not making money. I get a lot of I catch a lot of but that's the exception, not the rule. Is what I, I catch a lot of flack yeah. with the paranormal because of this, right. because of the Bible. Because well, I go because I go to church and I go to Bible, Bible studies, right? and people say, well, how can you do that? How can you do this? You know, palm reading and go to this paranormal and do all this and everything, and yet you go to church and all that. And because I always it's tell people, spiritual. Right. And I always tell people it started here. Right. Mm-hmm. Whatever people, gets you through yeah. this bad says, you know, world. A, that's, that's exactly what I, I told it. my protesters when they came to my convention. They're like, you're, you know, you're have yes. Satan all over. I'm like, no, it's spiritual. Like it it's has nothing, nothing to, to yeah, do exactly. with it. Right. Like, get your facts straight. And if you took the time, if you took the time, if you took the time to come in and see day. this and see what it's about you you think differently right. about it it's not yeah. what you're thinking it is you know mm-hmm. yeah right. something that has a, a certain name or something to it people readily put this in their mind today it's not i have no about. idea what you're talking about i was <laughs> just gonna say like jason i'm no, sure but, but you it is true it's a, it's a, a bigger problem yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's even diff- me because i was naive i didn't really know until i listened to you mm-hmm. and got to know you i'm like he's cool yeah, it's no, pretty it's, interesting so honestly yeah but it's like we had last time i was on your show um ron was here and you're like it's not just what I do. It's everybody who's in ev- all of these off the beaten path circles. Yeah. yeah. She was going to sneeze. I yeah, almost <laughs> had to sneeze. I'm oh, fighting a sneeze. sneeze. That's right. why my eyes are like, I was like, don't do it into the mic. We've no, no, we're good. We're good. Before. It's all right. I'm good. I'm good. It'd be people. so loud. Yeah. <laughs> not like a no. bomb going you? off. And it's fun. The people we meet, you know. Oh, yeah. You do meet so a many lot of good different folks. Different tires. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So many. So many. Yeah. 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 Everybody has their reasons for going into this, you know. They have their reasons for doing it, you know. Uh, sometimes it's to meet people. Sometimes it's to learn more about it. Sometimes it's yes. to make money. It's to whatever, you know, right. or a combination yeah. of things, you know. Everybody has their reasons for it and that. But, um, yeah, it, whatever works for you, you fun. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have fun what we do. Yeah. You have to. You have to have fun in this crazy industry. Well, anything oh, yeah. you're doing, if you are if you don't like it, you know, just do something right. else. You know, that, and that goes for your job, too. You know, if you're not happy with your job or whatever, right. you know, find something else. Do find something, something you put, you know, channel enjoy. your energy into something more productive for you, you know. Exactly. You know, that you can, you know, because things that you don't like, you're not going to do well at. You know, if mm-hmm. it's something you enjoy doing and that, you'll do very good at it. You know, but if, if it's something you don't like, well, maybe you don't go into the paranormal for something <laughs> you're skeptical about. Well, maybe you don't belong in this. Maybe you just belong, you know, take up a class and fencing or something and do something different you know fencing, yeah like yeah that. do something different yeah mm-hmm. you know one yeah. weird one weird fact about me when i'm investigating i am the most calm while i'm in any room by myself in a haunted place but when i'm watching a horror movie and <laughs> as much as i love horror i am the jumpiest person in the room like i will yeah. scream even in haunted houses and i work in one i scream and i just I cry sometimes but <laughs> when sit, i'm investigating i'm completely calm like i'm the, so calm and i'm just content so just Weird fact. <laughs> I've never felt like anything that I've ever done, like that, any haunted location or any investigation or anything that I've done or any of that, um, I've never felt like I was in harm's way. Mm-hmm. I never have. You know, I, I did like, one Yeah, I've never felt that time. way. Yeah. It was just such the yeah. on, easy feeling at the Sally I've, I've, House. I've, yeah, I've never mm-hmm. had that, yeah. Uh, in Atchison, Kansas. I just had the feeling, but got to get out of this room. Yeah, right I left um, one investigation because it was negative energy. Towards yeah. the end, though, I stayed almost the entire time until we were cleaning up. I'm like, hey, listen, I, I need to leave. Like, there's just something lingering that shouldn't be here. So I went back in eventually. But... Sort of like the same mm-hmm. feeling you get about certain people. Like oh, you yeah. say, yeah, yeah, I just don't want to... Yeah, I just want to, you know. It felt like something was trying to just sneak up back behind away. me and hug me. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. it does drain you, too, you know. Right. You could feel it draining your energy. Oh, yeah. But nothing really... Scary. Yeah. Nothing that I've ever, you know, nothing that I've ever been that afraid of, or I'm running out of there, or that. No, no, not at all. You know, I, I think some people that maybe, well, you know, it's of course not that I'm the last word on any of this, or I'm the big authority on it, or that. But I think maybe somebody that's not that experienced in it, you might be a little more influenced by Hollywood or by the movies. Mm -hmm. You might be more influenced that way. So okay, now here I am. I'm in this dark room. I'm in this haunted prison, which is supposed haunted and all this and that. So the mind starts playing. You know, you freak yourself out. Yeah, you do. You can scare yourself. Your mind starts playing tricks. Yeah. 
I'm going to go home and watch Paranormal Activity. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the fake stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like you see, those shows, they're all, you know, they're entertaining. And if the, you know, good thing, bad thing. And if the, right. if the show does influence maybe someone to go into the paranormal, study it a little more seriously, take it a little more, yeah, fine, then it did a purpose, you know. But um, if you're going into it and thinking, yeah, I'm going to go there and in 15 minutes I'm going to get all this stuff, you know, you may be in the paranormal field for 15 or 20 years and may never get that. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you just mm-hmm. may not, you know. You know. I know a lot of people who haven't. And then, and by the same token, the flip side right. to that coin is, I know people that every time they go out, I got yeah. the greatest evidence, I got the best stuff, and then they play this stuff right, you know, listen to it, and I'm like, I'm missing something. Here. I know. I'm just I, not I, getting I, it. No, but just, listen really close. Yeah, listen right close, there. and then, oh, well, you don't have a trained ear for it, <laughs> and well, you got to listen to it backwards, and yeah. you got to this, yes, and, that. and I'm like, what else do I have to that. do? Stand on my head and whistle Dixie right. too, and look at it. We have to go through all that just to hear. Like, yeah. is it really worth it? <laughs> you know, and I've pointed that out to a lot of people that yeah. claim that they have this great stuff and all that. And he says, you know, if the spirits are indeed taking the time to communicate with us, why are they just not doing it to us in a way right. that we're capable of understanding it? Right. You know, oh, they're speaking in a spiritual language or they're speaking spiritually and all this. And this. No, I think they wanna, if they want to communicate with me, they'll yeah. communicate <laughs> with me, you know. But then, then such is the case with that. Why is it that a good <laughs> medium can get those communications? And can get those and get names and get things and get stuff said and know that, you know. But some of the electronics can't do that, you know. Right. I, I don't know. You know, so it's, it's sort of this way, that way. Well, I've things, had a so. reading from you. Mm-hmm. I've also had a reading from yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And both very, very, very accurate. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Close. I'm glad to hear very that. Very head on. I yeah. would have to agree. Right. Awesome. I'm glad to hear spooky. that. A little spooky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but validating. Yes. Very validating for good. both. Glad to hear it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I say, it's a little different when you do these with people that you know. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I get people that all the right. time want me to know that. And I'm like, do you really want me to do a reading about you? Because it's like I already know so many things about you. Right. You know, I'm just going to say that. And then sometimes, too, like I notice like when I'm seeing something and I'll say something about money, like about a check coming your way or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I catch myself. I say, sure, Bob, it's tax refund time. Everybody's getting a check. <laughs> so they're going to say, right. oh, well, yeah, right. sure, of right. course you know that. You know, so I always got to I try to clarify that with people. Right. I say, no, I'm seeing something here, but I don't think this is the something I'm it's seeing. Just a this is something else. Reading yeah. Then. This is something but else. But sometimes yeah. it just makes people feel good, even though they know it in the back of their head you know it's also about manifesting nowadays everyone's uh, manifesting yeah. this and manifesting now, that. Had, now, had now i've had a couple of readings existence. i've had a couple right. of people that yeah, came up yeah. to me to get readings that actually scared me oh because because one i wondered why he came up to get the reading yeah i wondered why the man actually did because maybe he thought i was going to see some of the things there that i saw but um well Maybe we'll mention that off the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Off the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll talk about that. But sometimes that happens, too. Sometimes you do a reading for somebody, and it's like you see something there, or you see something about that person, and I'm like, shit. maybe they, maybe they, <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe they just don't think I'm going to see that. You know, I don't know why they would come up and want anybody to know. Why would you want me to know right. this? You know, why would you want anybody to know this? You know, In the time I've been doing readings, I've seen that once or twice. Yeah, yeah. So really just once or twice that uh-huh. I can think of, and, and, and yeah, it makes me it's ask the question. It's that bad? Oh yeah, it it causes like a moral quandary. Bad, yeah. But do you actually tell them like, hey? Uh, well, well, I, I've gotten I, I've gotten into the thing now. Long story short, I, I, if I see it turning a corner, I'll warn the person saying I'm a mandatory reporter. That basically okay. means like if I hear of something that I'm not supposed to hear, like sort of like um, psychic or not psychic, some um, clinicians mm-hmm. who are like uh, counseling people, they are mandatory reporters. If it comes out during the therapy that they did a, a bad thing, you have to you identify yourself. You will go tell the police. And oh so, wow! Yeah, or something. Wait, like did this. that happen to you? T- once was definitely something that was a police thing, um, and then one was more of like a "you're a morally awful person, and I want if oh there is a hell, God. I'd like to kick you there." I... But that, that was just twice, and I've done yeah out of how many readings? But yeah, no. So I agree wow, with you; it yeah. happens. Yeah. And that happened to you, Bob? I'll tell you about it later. We had something similar. Oh, can't talk okay. about it on the air. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with a case. It's sort of like was, a um wow. the viewers at home are like, are you serious? <laughs> you, you sort of have like a you sort of have like a client reader kind of a, a secrecy type yeah. thing. It, yeah, it, yeah. It's just sort of like you know, a moral I never thing. Yes. About that. That's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's I mean kind of scary, but I but mean for you guys, how do you uh, how do you even deal with that even after well, the fact? Well, you do. You do. You, I, you, I mean, I say yeah. things like, you know, people ask me, my gosh, Jason, you know, you do, you'll sit down, you do like 15, 20, 30 readings in an hour. Doesn't it drain you? No, but that one or two or things that are a lot that closer to that spectrum, mm-hmm. it'll wipe me out real quick. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I need to get up and take a walk. Right. Yeah. Take a breather. Sometimes you know what it is here again now. It's not the reading. It's that person. Mm-hmm. No, you got, it's, it's the that person, person right. that's doing yeah, it to it's you. it's the energy. Yeah. I've had that happen. Yeah. You know, somebody comes up and it's like, do I even want to touch this hand? <laughs> right. Do I want to, you know, do I want to, you know, there's just something here. 
at that point. Just like, yeah, I'm, I'm coming down with something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Kylie, anything in closing to say? Thank you for coming on, by the way. Uh, thanks what a nice for surprise. Last yeah, nice me. surprise yeah. to no, see you here. No, yeah. Nothing nothing too special that I have to say other than boo. Stay safe, kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just working on possibly doing another Paracon for the fall. Yes. And then of course in the fall season, October, Kildare City. Kildare we'll be going City. full tilt and all that. So yeah. Every weekend in October. Yeah, yeah. And Shell, you're all over the place doing different things. The and the poetry as thing as is something all of a sudden mm-hmm. that you're really right. getting into Trying to get and doing into that. There a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're doing that. Researching, so you don't really find a lot of spooky poems out there dealing with certain types. I like that so. one though. It, it did Thank give you. me chills. I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. lie. Don't be scared. And then Jason, of course, does all these fests and paracons and everything all yeah, over he's the place. A busy yes. man too. Yeah, I'm out yeah. there all over the place doing my tarot thing. Yeah, you know, so yeah. many of those. I, uh, that's another one too. There are, are so many of them, and I've been turning down a lot of that stuff because I just think there's too many. Yeah. I just think that it's overkill with them. Pick and choose. I think yeah. I think there's just too many. I'm of them, at my you know? limit, and there's ten times more going on. Yeah. yeah. I know. So. It's like every you, anything you look anytime I, anytime I go up on Facebook, it's like oh this you know. Which is awesome, by the way. I love it for the scene. But yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm only one person. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm gonna book you now for mine. <laughs> Rock on. Yeah, yeah. Well. That's about it. Um, Next week, Monday night, if you've got nothing going on uh, and you're just tired of watching Wheel of Fortune at 6.30, at 6.30, stop by the Forest View Public Library. I'll be doing a whole program there all about Sears. This one I take, I do take paranormal breaks. I don't do, everything I do is not paranormal, paranormal. I take breaks from it. This one I touch just a teeny bit on the paranormal on there, but it's basically just a program about Sears and some neat stuff that you may or may not know all about the Sears Roebuck phenomenon that once was and that. So we go through all that. I even touch on the X-rated catalog they had one time. Uh-huh. Ooh, a lot of people don't know nice. that there was an X-rated catalog. I'll talk that's, about that after the show. That's the, that's the most collectible catalog for people that collect the old Sears catalog. So we, we sure talk about all this crazy it. stuff on that program. And then the um, Chinatown tour, June 1st. If you want to do that, do something different. Um, that it's will be coming tour. up. Yeah, that's a nice tour. I like doing the Chinatown tour. And that will be with the Central Stickney Park District, uh, June 1st. Give them a ring at 708 496 Eight two nine two. I think they, she said they've got like ten or fifteen people signed up already, which is good. That tour goes over well, out. so that's that's neat. Nice. Yeah, so that's a neat tour to do. Mm-hmm. And then other stuff coming along the line and everything like that. Um, Paranormal radio. We will. I will be doing a show for May. If I do a show in June, it'll be early in the month in June, and then I kind of take a break over the summer with the shows. I don't do them, and then we pick it up again in the fall. We we pick it up again in September. We do that. So. Um, Thank you, Kylie, for coming on. Shell, nice to finally you, have Bob. you on here and get yes. to talk to you. Great you know, sitting down here yeah, with you. yeah, again yeah, nice. And Jason, yeah, thanks again for Sincerely coming back on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, welcome to come back anytime, any of you, anytime you want to stop you, on. So just, Thank you. you know, just pop on. You know, always nice having you guys here. So, okay, John, X Files music. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> You have been listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Monday, April the 10th, the year 2023. Paranormal Radio was directed by John DeVita. The executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network is Mr. John Chaconda. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Monday, April the 10th, the year 2023. Until next time, friends, please be safe and thanks for listening. <laughs>